Hello friends, welcome to another episode of My Engineering Today, and we're back with some interesting space updates. We'll begin with Elon Musk's hilarious reaction to Bezos' lawsuit, then we'll move on to Inspiration4's health research mission, and our updates will end with ASOG's return to port and Falcon 9's static fire event. Let's start with Elon Musk's reaction to Jeff Bezos over Starlink Gen 2 constellation conflict. After the lunar lander conflict, another conflict has come regarding satellite connectivity. The conflicts are happening in between the same most popular private companies, Elon Musk's SpaceX and Jeff Bezos's Amazon. SpaceX is about to focus on their Gen 2 Starlink satellites. They've also filed two configurations of this Gen 2 Starlinks to the Federal Communications Commission on the 19th of August. But somehow this has affected Amazon and they rose to protest. As we're already aware, Amazon had already requested the regulatory agency to dismiss the Gen 2 Starlink Constellation configuration filed by SpaceX. Their corporate counsel, Mariah Dodson Schumann, had also written a long letter to the FCC to reject SpaceX's proposal. SpaceX had put a good reply, stating that Amazon had spent more time on litigation against SpaceX than doing any actual development. Now, in a reply tweet to Michael Sheets, a space reporter, Musk gave his comment. Michael Sheets had tweeted on the 1st of September, SpaceX responds to Amazon's request that the FCC dismiss the Starlink Gen 2 amendment, calling it a continuation of efforts by the Amazon family of companies to hinder competitors, and referencing Blue Origin's lawsuit against NASA. Elon Musk has recently tweeted, saying, filing legal actions against SpaceX is actually his full-time job. This eventually proves a fitting reply to Bezos. Musk had also earlier criticized Bezos in the Lunar Lander lawsuit, stating that if lobbying and lawyers could get you to orbit, Bezos would be on Pluto. Schumann had written earlier to the FCC, By leaving nearly every major detail unsettled, such as altitude, inclination, and even the total number of satellites, SpaceX's application fails every test. From SpaceX's side, David Goldman, Director of Satellite Policy at SpaceX also gave a good response. Goldman said that this filing from Amazon is the latest in continuing efforts by Amazon to slow down competition. The commission should recognize this delay tactic for what it is, a continuation of efforts by the Amazon family of companies to hinder competitors to compensate for Amazon's failure to make progress of its own. Goldman, on the other hand, also pointed out that Amazon had not updated their satellite system details in the last 400 days, nor had they counted any approach to interference and orbital debris. But they had took only four days to object to SpaceX's next-generation NGSO system. He added that, while Amazon has waited 15 months to explain how its system works, it has lodged objections to SpaceX, on average, about every 16 days this year. If we see on SpaceX's Starlink, Musk had clearly explained the system. He said, processing is not an issue. Lasers links alleviate ground station constraints, so data can go from, say, Sydney to London through space, which is about 40% faster speed of light than fiber and shorter path. Also, no need for ground stations everywhere. Arctic will have great bandwidth. Musk also pre-stated about the launch of laser-linked Starlink satellites in the upcoming few months. SpaceX already has thousands of Starlink satellites operational in orbit, and their technology is more or less established. On the side with Amazon, they have Kuiper satellite constellation consisting of 3,236 satellites to compete with SpaceX. But the most striking thing is that Kuiper is still in the planning stage. There's no such satellite present to be launched from Amazon till now. So, Amazon's protest to Starlink's increasing empire, without having their satellite constellation in hand, is quite surprising. This further proves the litigious nature of Bezos. Our following update is based on SpaceX's upcoming Inspiration4 mission, where astronauts will conduct health research in orbit. SpaceX this year is trading high in achieving milestones and successes. And within nearly two weeks, by the 15th of September, SpaceX is about to accomplish their first private Crew Dragon mission named Inspiration4. This mission will be launched from NASA's Kennedy Space Center aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. 
The Crew Dragon spacecraft will orbit our planet for three days, then re-enter Earth's atmosphere and splash down in the Atlantic Ocean. As we know, this private orbital mission will help the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, not only on the monetary fundraising ground, but also on the medical research. According to some recent reports, this mission will also give way to research on the influence of spaceflight on human health and performance. Jared Isaacman, a billionaire entrepreneur and also the commander of the Inspiration4 mission, stated about this medical studies that the crew of Inspiration4 is eager to use our mission to help make a better future for those who will launch in the years and decades to come. In all of human history, fewer than 600 humans have reached space. We are proud that our flight will help influence all of those who will travel after us and look forward to seeing how this mission will help shape the beginning of a new era for space exploration. All the four crew, i.e. Jared Isaacman, Chris Zembrowski, Shean Proctor, and Haley Arsenault will carry out several experiments in the orbital journey as part of this partly medical mission. St. Jude, in collaboration with SpaceX, researchers at Wheel Cornell Medicine, and the Translational Research Institute for Space Health Trish, at Baylor College of Medicine will execute this thorough study of spaceflight effect on human health. According to some reports, the research teams from SpaceX, Wheel Cornell Medicine, and Trisha Baylor will take several biological samples, environmental and biomedical data from the four civilian astronauts before and after the mission. SpaceX teams, along with the researchers at Wheel Cornell Medicine, will experiment on the genomes, microbiomes, and telomeres, DNA strand located in the end of the chromosome, of the crews. Biomedical tests and sample collection during the mission will solely be done by the crew. An application named Cognition will be used to observe the behavioral and mental conditions of the crew. The biomedical data will mainly contain information related to ECG activity, oxygen levels in blood, heart rate and rhythm, sleeping condition, body movements of the crews, and also luminosity and sound levels of the crew capsule. As earlier planned by SpaceX about the glass cupola in Inspiration4 Crew Dragon capsule, the four civilian astronauts have finally revealed the finished glass cupola in Crew Dragon capsule C207, which was earlier used for Crew-1 mission. Today we're going to end our space updates with ASOG's return to port along with booster touchdown video revealed, and on the other hand, SpaceX carried out static fire of Falcon booster prior Polar Starlink launch. On Tuesday, the 31st of August, SpaceX's new drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, returned back to Port Canaveral with booster B-1061 after the successful completion of the 23rd Cargo Dragon mission. Two new recovery ships were seen in SpaceX's recovery fleet. They were named Doug and Bob after the NASA astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken. Doug docked in Port Canaveral 12 hours ahead of ASOG's arrival. SpaceX tweets on the 1st of September, a shortfall of Gravitas returns to port with Falcon 9 after its first mission. SpaceX teams also recently shared the clear video of Falcon booster landing. The footage shows the booster's descent through cloudy conditions and the dark of night. They tweeted on the video footage, landing in dark through clouds. The video, without any glitch, clearly showed deployment of booster B-1061's landing legs and perfect touchdown in the middle of drone ship ASOG. Though during the launch webcast, touchdown was not so clear, yet this video easily covers up that drawback. Other than this, SpaceX has also shared a picture of ASOG's return to port. Now on the other hand, SpaceX is gearing up for their upcoming Polar Starlink launches. According to SpaceX, they've successfully carried out the static fire of a Falcon 9 rocket slated to launch their Polar Starlink missions. This launch would be the first dedicated West Coast Starlink launch and will also mark the first launch from California in the last 10 months. Last mission carried out from California's Vandenberg Space Force Base was Sentinel-6A mission aboard a Falcon 9 rocket. SpaceX teams tweeted on the 2nd of September, Static fire test of Falcon 9 complete, targeting later this month for first West Coast Starlink mission. We'll announce a target date closer to launch. According to SpaceX, the static fire was carried out on a nine-flight booster B-1049. 
Booster B-1051 is also present there to support upcoming launches. Successful static fire is hinting that B-1049 is now ready to support its first launch. SpaceX says they will announce a target date closer to Starlink 2-1's launch, pointing that the launch would be carried out in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.